Okay, so we're going to talk about macromolecules. This is something that you absolutely need to understand. So there's four main macromolecules that we need to know. And I'm going to go over their basic structure and things that you need to look for uh, when you're charged with identifying a macromolecule. Okay, so these are the molecules of life. So all living things have these macromolecules. Okay. And they're composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. If you remember, we remember it by chomps, even though there's an N instead of an M. It's easier to say chomps. And you have to know that carbon is the basic backbone of all of these macromolecules. Carbon is the element of life, okay? So every living thing is made up of some form of a carbon molecule. Carbon can make four bonds and they're covalent. They're never ionic. Okay, So you have to understand that um, covalent bonds are the ones that uh, share electrons. Okay, so here's some examples of carbon bonds. It can bond with any other element, uh, but it can only make four bonds. So here's a carbon and each of these lines represents one bond. So one, two, three, four. And in this case, one of the bonds that is making is with another carbon. And you will see this in all of the macromolecules. Carbon is bonded with other carbons. Here's a double bond. So again, it only has four bonds. There's one, two, three, four, and two of them are with another carbon. Those are much stronger bonds. And then triple bonds are really, really strong. And look, so the carbon is triple bonded with another carbon, so then it can have a bond with another um, element. Okay, so the first class of molecules is the carbohydrates. CHO is a good way to shorten it, and it's in a one to two to one ratio. That means for every carbon, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. So if there are six carbons, there will be 12 hydrogens and six oxygens in a molecule. If there's four carbons, there will be eight hydrogens and four oxygens. So one to two to one ratio always. Okay, and they're important in energy. And don't forget, carbohydrates are simple sugars like glucose. And also cellulose, which is a starch. And glucose, um, is a monomer. It is just one um, molecule. When you put monomers together, you get lots of um, chains of sugars, and those sugars become then are called starches. When there's lots of sugars together in a polymer, you get a starch. And cellulose is a really good example of a starch. If you look at the OSE, um, that means that the, it, it is a sugar um, base, so cellulose, glucose, maltose, galactose, all of those things are sugars, which are carbohydrates, okay? So it's very important that you understand that um, sugars are actually used for support. Um, in plant cells, cellulose um, makes up the cell walls. And here's how I always remember it. Cellulose sounds like celery. And celery is a plant, and it has cell walls, and that's what makes up the cell wall. Glucose is the carbohydrate we'll concentrate on. So monomers, such as glucose, so here's a monomer of glucose, can be attached to other monomers to form polymers. So here's a very simple example of, um, I think this is lactose. So it's one molecule of glucose and another molecule of galactose, uh, the other way around. And if you see this little O in between, that's what's holding them together, this bond to the oxygen. What happened was they took out uh, water to make this bond. So, and we call that hydrolysis, where the bond is made by the removal of water. And then actually what you can do is you can break the bond to make monomers again by adding water. Um, that's something that, um, is a little more complex, but you have to understand that when uh, molecules are joined together, um, something has to come out, and in this case, it's water. So this is a monomer 
Um, this is a polymer or a disaccharide because saccharides are sugar, so there's a monosaccharide. There's a disaccharide. Okay, lipids, you know, have to know that they're long chains, and I've shown you a couple examples here. Every time this, there's a kink in this thing, that shows that there's a carbon, uh, there's a carbon at every vertex here, okay? So you have to be able to identify either this type or this type, okay? So there are long chains of carbon attached to um, a glycerol or um, other compound, okay? So it's important in storage. Uh, we store our um, food as fat, okay, and lipids are fats. And it's also important in cell structure because cell membranes are made of phospholipids. So those are lipids. So you have to understand that lipids are involved in storage and structure. Nucleic acid, you need to look for this. You've got to look for the 5-pentose or the pentose sugar, the 5-carbon sugar, the nitrogenous base. It'll show ends, lots of ends, lots of nitrogens. If you look up here, there's nitrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen. That's a nitrogenous base. There's your 5-carbon sugar. And always look for that phosphate group at the end. There's phosphate right there, okay? So this is how you will identify it. It looks like a little house with um, a... Um, a base and a phosphate. If you don't see the phosphate, the sugar, and the base, then it's not a nucleic acid, okay? So it's a nucleotide, which is this, we call it a base, a five carbon sugar, which is this, the pentose, and a phosphate, which is this, the P. And this is what a phosphate looks like in uh, real terms chemistry. And each of these vertexes is a carbon. That's an accepted form of carbon. Oops, sorry. Uh, go here. Okay, the next slide is proteins. And you have to understand that proteins are important as catalysts because enzymes are proteins. Not all proteins are enzymes, but all enzymes are proteins. They're also important as carrier molecules. Don't forget, when we bring things across the cell membrane, those channels are made of proteins, okay? So you have to understand that those are the very important things about proteins. Um, you have to be able to identify an amino group and a carboxyl group. And proteins are made of amino acids. That's why sometimes people who um, are very athletic and lift weights will take amino acid supplements because um, they, they will allow uh, them to um, improve their um, fitness with um, proteins, okay? So amino acids, there's an amino acid and an amino acid, and it comes together to form a dipeptide, which is a protein, okay? You have to look at the amino group, which is NH, and a carboxyl group, which is a C double bond OOH. You just have to m remember or memorize that, okay? Uh, you will also see things like R uh, groups or side chains. That's another good indicator of a protein. But if, as long as you see the amino group and the carboxyl group, you'll know that it is an amino acid. You have to be able to identify that. Okay, that's it.